after their first album. Dude, Frailty at Words was awesome. I don't. I mean, it was great. The screams on that are like so freaking intense. Like, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny too because there's two guys. Like, there's another guy that screams like real high pitched, and he'll just like come in at the end of one of the screams, like all. <laughs> it's just like yeah. insane. And if you're the guy that comes in like this, <laughs> then you are ready for episode 11 of Discography Discussion. I am Joe. That is Dan. That is Buddy. What's Yo. up, everybody? Uh, and by everybody, I mean everybody. Everybody. Buddy. See what I did there? That's just the oh, one, buddy. actually. That's the only just, one. Me. Just the one, buddy. Actually. <laughs> And Everybody you, already knows my name. I don't really know who knows who I actually am. Right. <laughs> Every time you're driving down the street and, you know, people are having a bad day, they go, hey, watch it, buddy. And you're like, dude, what, I'm just What did I'm, I do? Yeah, I'm just here. I don't know what you guys are doing. I'll tell you what we're doing. We're talking about Hope's Fall tonight. Yes, yes, we are. Hope's Fall. Oh, man. I mean... <laughs> can, can we actually have a conversation about Hope's Fall, or do we just have to listen to the satellite ears and that's the show? Well, if you guys can keep me from going full fanboy, I think we'll I think never go that. full fanboy. Yeah. <laughs> Buddy's going to be here to lay down some hard-earned truth for us that we may or may not have realized was the truth, but now are now have chosen to accept it anyway <laughs> <laughs> as the truth. So um, we're talking about Hope's Fall. Hope's Fall is a uh, is a hardcore band. Uh, from the early 2000s, and I mean like really early, like 2001. Uh, which uh, was, 99. Well, sure, yeah, 99. <laughs> well, wasn't the frailty... Yeah, okay, yeah, he's right. The frailty of words was 1999. <laughs> Dang, I'd have thought 2001, but, you know, close enough. I only know that because I did a bunch of research. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't research anything. Congratulations on being the guy in the room who's done the most research this episode, Mr. Buddy. Oh, snap. Yes. Well, maybe that the extent of that research is what does the album year say next to the collection in iTunes? Yeah, you can't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't really um, argue with the Googles. <laughs> I mean, you, you can. <laughs> they, they know all. See, I was just like typing and stuff in, and then clicking. I'm feeling lucky, and uh, I had all kinds of cool stuff pops up then. But uh, anyway, uh, Hope's Fall, 1999, hardcore. Pretty much straight hardcore. Um, I've heard you classify them as space rock. Uh, yeah, a little bit later on, sure. Um, yeah. Realty of Words, which is the first album, is kind of more... Um, what what I want to say, yeah, like, it is more cl- that classic hardcore, but it's got more structure than, like, your typical hardcore. Yeah, you know, it's kind of techy a little bit. Um, yeah. A lot of different parts, uh, which is actually pretty... Uh, Pretty common with the with the late '90s, early 2000s metalcore. Uh, there was a whole lot of like, okay, we're gonna play this for t- 15 seconds, and then then we're gonna switch to this, you know, and then we're gonna switch to this, and it just it's kind of just a lot of parts strung together into like you know what, like five or six minutes. The songs were the songs were fairly long on uh, on the yeah. frailty words. I remember like wondering when the album was gonna end, not in a bad way, but like. You know, it was usually your hardcore records are pretty quick. Uh, Yeah, 30 minutes or so, yeah. When life gives you lemons, you make life take the lemons back. When Skype gives you a bad connection, you start the conversation over again. No, Shiva, you've already been out. This is episode 11 of Discography Discussion. Tonight, your hosts will be Dan, Yep, Joe, and Buddy. Hey. Hey, Buddy's here? Nobody told me Buddy was here. Well, didn't you get the memo? I don't, do you guys send out memos? Like Kool-Aid man. <laughs> you guys want some metal? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I just paint. I've got a big tattoo on my belly that just says metal. Metal man. But it's all stretched out because I'm fat. So. My, well, dude, being fat is so metal. <laughs> all the best metal bands are fat guys, right? Totally, dude. Like, what was that band, Feast Eternal? And they were all like 300 plus pounds. Like, 
And you're, like, I mean, the, the band fit the name, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can only play riffs as heavy as you actually are. Right. Well, <laughs> like Crimson Thorn, they're like the heaviest band ever, right? And they were like heavy dudes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> fact. <laughs> the lead singer's name of uh, that band was Luke Reno. I, so there's something to that, I think. <laughs> I wish this had I anything to no do relation. with the band that we were talking about tonight. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. Uh, so tonight we're actually talking about Hope's Fall. Hope's Fall. The mighty Hope's Fall. The the ultimate in space rock amazing. Space rock, space metal, metal hardcore, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Very Hope, spacey. Yeah, Hope's Fall kind of did it all, right? really. I mean... Uh, they they'd started off as, as more of like your traditional hardcore band. Uh, and when I say traditional hardcore band, I mean like Poison the Well and stuff. So, you know, probably not actually old school hardcore because that would be like what? Like uh, Black Flag and stuff. But like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or. Have uh, a more uh, punk sound. Yeah, Rights of Spring, stuff like that. But uh, no, so this is, I mean, when I was introduced to hardcore, this is the kind of stuff that I was introduced to, stuff like Hope's Fall and Poison the Well and like Misery Signals and like Beloved and Zale. Which had a lot more of a like an emo like tinge to it. Yeah, kind of kind of like an emo under undercurrent there. Um, so, did yeah. you discover Hope's Fall before or after Zayo? Uh, I discovered Hope's Fall uh, a little bit after Zayo. Uh, but not long after. Actually, it's weird because I bought the first Hope's Fall album, uh, The Frailty of Words. I bought that, uh, you know, back in 99 when it came out. No, I bought that probably like <laughs> 2002 or something. And uh, I actually got it out of a out of a, like a dollar bin at a local CD store. Uh, and it was really cool, too, because I couldn't find any information out about that record when it came out, like I looked online and, or not when it came out, but like when I got it, I looked online and like, if you go on Hope's Falls, I don't even know if they have a website anymore, but basically anywhere where they have their discography listed, typically it's not there. <laughs> like it yeah, never, it like it never even happened. It was like, like recorded by on, on their own or something like that. Yeah, um, it must've been, there was yeah. a label that put it out, but I don't remember what they were. It was like DTS recordings or something. It was, it was very low key, but, um, but yeah, you know, and of course they they went on to bigger, better things. They did the No Wings to Speak of EP, uh, which was great, you know, and, uh, and they did the Satellite Years, uh, and then they actually they kind of did a one eighty and went in a totally different direction, which we'll talk about uh, here in a little bit. We but, get to uh, their what fourth album, A Types. <coughs> yes. <laughs> See, <laughs> I discovered Hope's Fall from the Satellite Years. Very first thing I think I ever heard was the Escape Pod for Intangibles. Yeah, and Dan plays that on shuffle in the car one day, and I say this is pretty cool, and he says, "Funny thing, the whole record does not sound like this." Yeah, it sounds totally different. And from that point on, I did not care, but it was it, it, it's another example of an almost perfect record in my eyes. Yeah, the satellite years is really good to me. Um, so we we might we might have some disagreement on that later, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, Hope's Fall, <laughs> Hope's Fall kind of had a very lasting impact on hardcore music, uh, you know, in general. I think there were melodic hardcore bands before that, like Strong Arm was pretty melodic, and there, there were bands that did the melodic thing, but um, I feel like I feel like Hope's Fall really did something a little bit different. I mean, they had the emo vocals, like, it's not, it's not as unfamiliar of a sound than what you would encounter today with bands that kind of mix the, like the emo singing with the, with the screaming. Um, but, yeah. but now it's that, that stuff's kind of a bad thing. Whereas, you know, when, when the frailty of words came out, that wasn't like a very common thing, uh, back in 1999 to, to hear that. And, and when I say emo vocals, I mean, they, <laughs> they don't really sound like what you would consider to be that now, you know? Um, yeah, it's a very different type of emo singing. Um, yeah, more reminiscent of, reminiscent of stuff like, um, you know, like job not not really Jawbreaker, but uh, you know, like Sunny Day Real Estate. You know, like like those more like '90s emo bands that, again, yeah. it was it was kind of like before it was a bad thing. Like it was just a style of music, and it was okay, you know. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and that's what it sounds like uh, here. Um, and so, yeah, they notably changed their vocalists halfway through. 
like their career. Like I guess you could say when they made it big, that was when the vocalist change uh, had happened. Right. Um, yeah, and that typically happens too. Like when a band starts off smaller, like they did, you know, you have a dedicated lineup, you know, for the first couple of records, but then you're touring all the time and your life changes and people go, you know, they just they, yeah. they leave. And that was, uh, for some people, that unfortunately was the case with Hope's Fall. Um, but I guess we'll just, we'll kick it all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> Start off with, uh, with the frailty of words and, uh, and we'll go from there. We'll take off into space. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I found this record later. Most of the, what I heard started with satellite years. And I don't think I heard the no wings to speak of EP until many years later. Like I'd never given it any listens and I still didn't know at the time that the frailty of words existed. I think I may have found this long after Magnetic North. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, this is one of those, okay, here's the first songs they ever wrote as a band. Yep. And one thing about Hope's Fall that is mentioning, worth mentioning at any point is they have a unique sound, they have a unique song style, and everybody ripped them off. Yeah. To the point where there are far more successful bands that exist that have probably made a lot more money and sold a lot more records with this guitar style. And you know it when you hear it, but you can't really put a finger on it other than, well, yeah, there's Hope's Fall right there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when we when we did a band, we did it too. You know, we tried to sound like that. You know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, I don't, th- I don't think we really reached that, but. Uh, but yeah, like that that whole idea of let's be let's be super melodic and and be um but still equally as like intense, you know. Yeah, um, like this record's very uh it's it's atmospheric in a way. Like there's a more full sound to it yeah. than just hey, there's the guitar, there's the bass, there's the drum. Right. You know, there's uh there's just some, there's like a, a whole pattern over it like it's almost like they have like a fuzz distortion going on as well, mm-hmm. which, you know, is kind of like a it's just got that more spacey quality to it. Yeah. Uh, just kind of this feeling that you get when you listen to this uh, album. Um, yeah, I definitely hear that. And it was definitely expanded upon later on. Um, on this record, I actually consider it to be kind of their most traditional record as far yeah. as kind of still sounding like their style of music. Um, actually, one thing I really like about this record is the bass sound. Uh, you can actually hear the bass player, which is, again, not not common. Um <laughs> And yeah. uh, it's he's just got a kind of a nice clean tone and like you think a uh, clean bass whatever but like it actually sounds really good and um, it like really backs it up and and you, you can you can you can hear the bass parts actually like being played individually and yeah you know, it's not just a it's a very dry sounding record too they yeah. they clearly they mic'd everything up the best they could and you know th- th- hopes fall for being very trippy especially when you think about what does Hope's Fall sound like. You know, it's it's that trippy space rock style. But 80% of their releases are very dry. In yeah. fact, I think the Satellite Years would be the only record that has any sort of atmosphere or, well, reverb is the most obvious sound. Right. But for the most part, your drums are dry, your bass is dry, and especially later on, your vocals. Like, there's no processing there. Yeah, That's not exactly at all. what you get. And the vocals really I, overpower the mics on this uh, on this recording too. Like it's definitely they're definitely in the red a lot, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I would I would say though I think some of the atmosphere came in on uh, the EP no yeah. ways to speak of. I mean, you know, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I think that's that's where the start of some of the atmosphere really like was in your face. Uh, I, yeah, I think this one it was more about the riffs. Um, yeah. Were more Cuz I mean, like to me, like this one's my favorite record, and the the opening track where it builds up and each instrument just kind of comes in, yeah, is just I love that. It's like the way you start like a show, right? You know, sure. you get, they you get the did. bass player playing, and then they shine the light on the you know guitarist, and the drummer kicks in. Like it's it's just it's a fun start to something. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's that's probably the best way to describe this record is a fun start to something. <laughs> S- standout yeah. track on this record for me is a new day. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there's your hopes fall. It's I call it the hopes fall riff because it's for guitar players and bassists. It's the eighth fret, open fret, C to an E in drop D, which is what they're in. You're in a B flat to a D, 
it's I call it the Hope's Fall riff because they go back to it so much. Every single record. It's and and every band did that for like twelve years. Yeah. And it's a sound that you know and you like because it's a very pleasing chord change. Yeah, even if you don't know about Hope's Fall, you've heard other bands play this, you know. Um and it's 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 influential. Um, and it's kind of weird too because it, with this record not really being that huge, it's kind of weird that it would that it would all be there like the whole package. I mean, on the first record like for a band, for a band like Hope's Fall, you'd really would think that the first record would be the worst, right? You know, like yeah. Um, but it's it's really not. I mean, it does sound notably different than uh, than the EP. Um, and actually, what I like about this record that does not exist on future Hope's Fall releases, uh, there's kind of a chaotic sound to it too. Um, it actually gets chaotic. I mean, it, and I'm not. I don't mean like like converge or something chaotic, but um, yeah. they they kind of they kind of create a wall of noise in places. Um, with the vocals just being so overpowering in the mix, and there's actually some moments on that record that sound a little bit like the band uh, Training for Utopia, uh, if you remember uh, their Plastic Soul Impalement CD. Um, yeah, pretty pretty similar in places to that, um, and the vocals the vocals are a little similar to the, to the early Training for Utopia as well. Uh, which I feel is kind like of, the go ahead. I say it's kind of a weird connection to make, but uh, but I I remember thinking that like when, when I first heard it. Yeah, I feel like the vocals, uh, like just then, you know, listening to it now and then remembering, you know, my notes here of it, you know, they, they kind of have this like vague vacuum effect almost, like he's screaming inward to a degree. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which, you know, I've heard that kind of that style reproduced on a few other bands, but um, it's just very like, I guess it, it could be the effect created when he kind of ratchets up his scream from a lower register to a higher register. It just has this, like, you know, like this Suction sucking sound feeling, almost, yeah. like the air is going the other way. <laughs> so let me get this straight. It sounds like it sucks. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> glad we glad we established that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I know, I know exactly what you mean, though. Like, uh, it, it almost does sound like it's an inhalation scream. Um, yes. I can't verify whether it is or isn't, as I've never seen Hope's Fall with this vocalist. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say it's not. Just by the way it sounds, but I but I can understand how it does sound like that in places. But one thing I really liked about the vocals here was that they were just very, um, very emotional and very very impactful. Like there there was just there was a ton of emotion in all of the vocals. Yeah, and um, and you you can really hear that. <laughs> um, and I think it makes me wonder, uh, you know, like if that the emotion that they're trying to convey, you know, then maybe they felt that the music didn't quite match up to that, which is why I think when they moved on to no wings to speak of two years later, um, that's when they started ratcheting up some of that melody going on and they changed up, uh, you know, with adding a whole lot of atmosphere, uh, yeah. you know, to their music. Um, cause, um, just in every, in every aspect, no wings to speak of, uh, which is, you know, sadly, only an EP. Um, yeah. It sounds very different than the Perovia one. It does, um, and not in a bad way either. Yes, it's very, very good, but it's definitely different. I think, I think the hardest part is that. Uh, I, th- I think the hardest part with this record is that the, with the with the uh, EP versus Perovia words. As I, you know, I was actually a little disappointed in the EP the first time I heard it because I was stupid and, you know, I was in a brutal mood that day instead of like, not, you know, atmospheric <laughs> mood, um, which it happens. That's been me all week. <laughs> yeah. That's you every day, buddy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he's like, yeah, but why isn't it heavier? It's like, dude, it's a, it's a <laughs> Merle Haggard record, you know, <laughs> it's like, um, but no, I, you know, I, I remember, uh, yeah, obviously, obviously I saw the error in my ways, but, um, I think, I think this EP was very transitional in the sense that like, I think every hardcore band, you know, you put your first record out and it's like songs that you've had in on the books for literally years. And, uh, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're basically, you're presenting your version of hardcore or your version of metal to the world for the first time. And, uh. 
so frailty of words has a has a huge diverse mix of influences on it uh which i think yeah. sometimes people mistake for progressive <laughs> Uh, which it, you know, it isn't really progressive, but, uh, I think, I think the band just made a decision on this EP, like, okay, uh, so are we going to continue to be heavy or are we going to pursue this melodic sound? Um, yeah. Cause I feel like there, there was four songs on this album and if, I mean, I listened to it like five times, but I did it while I was working. Right. Uh, so, you know, sometimes I, I came in and out. I was listening to it, but it seemed, I think it feels like the first two songs are like their, like a melodic version of their, you know, the amped up version of their old style. And sure. then I think the last two songs are more of that, like, almost a rockish type of a sound. A little bit. I mean, the Far Pavilions opens up pretty intensely, but it, yeah. it, it quickly, uh, it quickly bogs down. You know, it doesn't bog down, but it, it slows down into, into it goes to a slower register. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, and it does that, like, it starts very intense, and then you get to, like, what would be, like, a, a middle track of a CD, and then it just leaves you there. It's which over. is why I'm yeah. sad about the EP. Like, I wish there was more, because I really like the sound that, right. and that, you know, nobody to speak of has. Right, and that was the last recording that Doug, their original vocalist, was on. And now, did he write the lyrics for the Satellite Years? I don't know, because when I listened to the Satellite Years... See, Hope's Fall kind of came around at a time where, yes, you could find information about them on Wikipedia, but there isn't as much information on them, like, behind the scenes as there is for other bands. Um, you know, because, like, nowadays when a band comes out, you know everything about them. You know, yeah. you, you know who wrote the song, you know who, you know, did everything. But uh, essentially, um, you know, I, it sounds to me like I, I can only go by how it sounds. And I can tell you that it sounds very much in the same vein as what we had gotten on No Wings to Speak Of. So I'm going to go ahead and say that it was probably a mix of Doug and Jay that wrote those lyrics. I think I think Doug left and they kept the songs that they had and then they just had Jay come in and, and do his thing, you know, and he, he probably just finished the rest of it up, you know. And again, this is just guessing because, you know, it's possible that like, you know, it's not uncommon in a band where, you know, the guitarist writes all the lyrics or, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. once we get to A-Types and Magnetic North, you know, Jay Forrest kind of took over the songwriting. He becomes the band, yeah, at that point. Um, the style change, the, the vocal delivery changes, but without getting too far ahead... It's the satellite years. <laughs> well, yeah. So I mean, we could do an entire podcast just on the satellite years. Well, so the EP, um, just to, you know, one last thing I'll say about that is that the EP really gives you a good taste of what's to come, at least on the next record, but still changes things up enough to kind of create, uh, kind of create a, an atmosphere of its own and it, it's kind of got its own sound. Um, and whenever, whenever I'm talking about this, I, I always kind of keep a, keep a frame of reference that helps me categorize the albums better. Um, they're not concept albums by any means, but um, there's kind of a space theme that shows up in the satellite years that continues on through the end of magnetic North. Whereas, uh, you know, the frailty of words and, uh, and no means to speak of still kind of felt more like, um, I don't know, atmosphere, like an earthy, like kind of more of an earthy sound. Um, and didn't, didn't really, really focus on like the space thing. So like if you hate the space aspects of hopes fall, um, you know, those first two records are still definitely worth a, worth a listen. Yeah, definitely. I would almost call them a niche band in the sense that there's this entire genre of film and TV that's called space cowboy. Yeah. That you either love or you hate. And most people that love Space Cowboy, Space Westerns, that sort of thing, they tend to be a very angry group of people because we can't get as much of it as we want. At this point, we basically, we've got Firefly and things that happened 20 years ago that are still kind of cool. Right. Hopes Fall, same vein. They, they feel they fill a niche in your brain where like this this galactic type of sound this solar 
overtone that other bands don't do. And you know, one person would say, "Well, Massive Attack does that sort of thing." I say, "No, that's a that's not the same feeling because Massive Attack will get you closer to Nine Inch Nails than anything else." And while that would be a very industrial way of thinking, Hope's Fall is you got to spend some time in the atmosphere to really enjoy what's going on. It's I want to li- hear some chorus and flange pedals, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait, what was this new metal now? Yeah, yeah, you know, the saddle hut years kind of is a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but uh it doesn't bother me too much. Um I mean, so so the satellite kicks off with a song called Andromeda. It's a it's an instrumental um and it kind of it kind of like puts you in the mood for the record. You know, kind of, kind of right off the bat. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't spend a lot of time establishing its atmosphere, but you can basically tell this is something new. This doesn't sound like, you know, the the potential fifth track off of No Wings to Speak of. You know, um, yeah, we're, we're we're somewhere else entirely. You know, and you're looking through the, you're looking through the album notes, and you know, there's all these pictures of satellites and and, and bodies in space and and, and all this stuff and. Uh, um, Andromeda kind of kind of kicks on at kind of a slower speed, um, and I think that that was kind of a common complaint when that record came out was that that they that they'd kind of slowed down, you know that 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 the intensity had been taken down a notch, um, which is just a product of of well this is the atmosphere that we were going for, um, but again if you if you're you know if that's not your jam <laughs> it's not your jam. And, and those people clearly didn't hang on long enough for the bending. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, the bending. Yeah. Dead in Magazines, Dana Walker, you know. I listen to Andromeda, and I really feel like I'm in a spaceship yeah. as it blasts off into space. And yeah, I'm, really and I'm watching like the that. Earth getting smaller and smaller. Right, but it, it's done so well. It's not cheesy. You know, like like you'd think, like, like if I was going to go out and make a space rock album, like right now, I would probably, like put all these like sound clips of like rockets taking off and stuff like in, in the middle of it and stuff. Uh, Hopeful doesn't have to do that. They, they, they achieve that with Andromeda. And, um, and that, that was the big thing too, is, is it just, it's starting off with an in- instrumental. That's kind of ballsy for like this kind of band because you really don't, you don't, you don't, yeah, you usually don't... you want to start off like hard and heavy right out the gate if that's what you're about. And so, the fact that they started with that shows, you know, that there was definitely a uh, a departure from their prior sound. You know, notably because this is the album where you know Jay Forrest comes in, uh, right. replacing Doug Venable as the uh, vocalist. Right. Um, you know, which to my discretion, you know, I think I preferred Venable. Sure. Uh, a lot of people Jay do. Forrest. Yeah. Um, I like them both. Uh, in the, I, I like them both because they serve very different purposes. Um, Satellite Years was definitely the transition, you know, kind of away from that sound, but still sounded similar enough. Like his screaming was in this very much in the same vein. Um, kind of, it was kind of like when Dallas left Under Oath, and how you know Under Oath put out their only chasing safety right afterward was Spencer, and he he screamed like Dallas, you know, <laughs> on that yeah. on that first record that he was on. And I think it's uh, it's kind of similar here on Satellite Years is that you can tell that, you know, at this point in the band, they're going out and playing live shows and they're playing, you know, like they're playing. Like, they're still playing their old stuff. And- right. Yeah. So, they're, you know, they're still playing three songs off Frailty Words and, you know, three, you know, two songs off of off of the uh, EP and then, you know, <laughs> and then these new songs. And so they, they they all they all blend together enough for like a live setting. Um, and so, yeah, so Jay's vocals. Um, are definitely in the same vein. Um, one thing that I will say about the record that doesn't make it quite perfect from a technical standpoint is the vocals are, are turned way down on this one. Uh, yeah, I do. They do get buried during some pieces and, you know, like I can't, I sometimes can't understand, like I can't hear what's going on, you know, enough to decipher the vocals without pulling up a, you know, lyric sheet. Right. Well, and I can't help but feel like this was a deliberate choice too. Um, I think maybe maybe they'd been a little unhappy, and again, I don't know, but uh, it just sounds like maybe like because the the level of vocals on this record would be acceptable probably uh, for 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 other bands. Like if this was the first thing you heard by Hope's Fall, it's not something yeah. that you would really notice that much. 
but um, you know, you go back and listen to the EP, and like Doug is just like so loud in the mix. You know, he, he's a he, he's literally just above everything, like overpowers everything. Um, yeah. But I think this record it was kind of more deliberate choice to kind of push the vocals back a little bit and uh, and let the music breathe. Now the Satellite Years was recorded by. Matt Talbot in his own studio? Yes. Who is Matt Talbot? Because I know you know. Um, Matt Talbot. He's the lead singer of, uh, I can't remember the name of the band. Uh, it's Hum, I believe. Oh. They have that song out called Stars. So so isn't this interesting? that Because this mix kind of sounds like if you threw Hope's Fall into a Hum record. It's that's You get your ambiance... You get your reverb. Your drum sound, I swear, is just two overhead microphones with a kick mic. Like it's it's a very open sound. And I think part of it is just that's the ear you had behind the board is how you get that sound, especially with that lower vocal. That's that's like that's you know, that's underground punk. Like sure. I, no, I don't want my vocals to be the center point of the record. Yeah, and I mean, it's possible that he may not have been that way. You know, like, um, you know, it may it may not have been a deliberate choice on the vocalist. I think, I think it was really just the band was like, we're you know, we have decided at this point that we are going to embrace the atmosphere a hundred percent. You know, and and with that means that you're going to have to tone down the hardcore elements a little bit. Uh, but they didn't they didn't entirely. Um, on this record, so I think I think I think most people that liked Hope's Fall were still on board for this record. Um, yeah, I still you know like I still pretty much like this record. Um, you know, it's not my it's not my favorite. I'm more of a fan of the first two, uh, but it's still a good album. You know, I can spin it. <laughs> it uh, it definitely used to be my favorite, um, and in a lot of ways, I'll tell I'll still feel, tell people it's it's. It's my favorite hardcore album, even though it's uh, it's hardly a hardcore album. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's got screaming, it's got heavy <laughs> you gotta parts. You got to look really hard for the hardcore, right? I mean, it's got screaming, it's got heavy parts, and it is very intense. And I think um, you know a lot of those songs, like just the the melodies in there, you know, can really really get under your skin. And under after repeated listens, you know, it just really uh, it's hard for me to shake those songs. You know, when I'm done and. Um, there's uh, there's two songs of a very particular note on this record that really sum it all up, and they're at the very end. Um, the first one is Escape Pod for Intangibles, which uh, I believe actually uh, Matt Talbot actually sings on that. Yes, he does. Because it's definitely not Jay singing. We will get enough of that in the future. Um, but okay. uh, <laughs> but uh, it sounds really good. It's 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 very it's very spacey, sparkly sounding. Um, you know, super not metal. You know, uh, but Very uh, twinkle twinkle little star. <laughs> kind of, yeah, but kind of creepy too. It only has one lyric, uh, one line, and just repeated over and over again. It's it's I. Uh, he says, "I left the horizon curled up and curled frozen up and still. frozen still." The tilting of the hourglass with all this time to kill, and uh, I don't know. It just really works. The song's not very long either. It's only like two minutes or whatever. And it, it functions as a very good build-up to the final track, The Bending, which is probably the hardest song on the record. Uh, it's typically a fan favorite. It shows uh, when they play The Bending, you know, they, they start playing and Jay jumps off the stage into the audience, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really intense song. Uh, probably am, th- this song... I'm glad they end the record with something like that because, you know, I, I can't stand it when bands like... I. There's bands that end that like to end their records with like the slow, you know, drone out, and I much yeah, like prefer we did. like the let's go out with a bang. Yeah, end it slow like we did. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I get that. Um, but yeah, the bending the bending is a perfect ending to the record. And it's weird because I think I think on this song Jay sounds the most like Doug <laughs> that he does on the whole record. Um, it's very it's 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 very similar to Doug's delivery without actually sounding exactly like Doug. Um, yeah. But this record kind of really propelled Hope's Fall up there. Um, they, they they started c- kind of becoming a more popular band at this point, and uh, they were signed to uh, to Trust Kill Records, uh, who also had uh, Poison the Well, and um, so they were they were definitely making a name for themselves with this record. Which is why when we get to 
A types, it all kind of it all kind of changes. Um, I don't. <laughs> oh, we skip this one. Uh, no, we can't. There's not enough albums to you, skip. You can't skip an album that has Icarus on it. I'm sorry. Icarus is probably the standout cut on the album. Um, but it is different. Um, so with A types, what you get is it's kind of like if you if the it, let's say that the satellite years is a glass of water, and you take that glass of water and you pour it out all over the kitchen floor. Like sure. It has similarities to that original glass of water, <laughs> but uh, it's clearly not the same thing. It is a it is a less it is a lesser version <laughs> of, of what you get. Undrinkable because it is all over the floor. It is literally like all over the floor. So is unlistenable. So if you uh, enjoy your giant glass of water, <laughs> which is the past three albums, um, you're going to have a lot of trouble enjoying this because you're essentially laying on the floor lapping it up with your tongue. Um, For those people that are trying to get a real grasp on what Dan is trying to convey, this is like when Rage Against the Machine stopped making music with with uh, Zachary De La Roche, and then we found out Chris Cornell was going to be the new lead singer of Rage Against the Machine. What did we all say? How is he going to do those songs? Right. And then three months later... The band is now called Audio Slave, and it sounds like what would happen if Rage started hanging out with Soundgarden. Right. Same thing. Um, A types is like what happens when Hopes Fall gets a new lead singer, but they forgot to change the name. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Um, this album. There's almost no screaming on this record. It's it's far less heavier than anything that they did yeah it's not you know? crunchy it's not you know um it's also not wholly atmospheric either which I, which is very strange to me i could i could get past the fact that the majority of the vocals are sung you know because i'm not that shallow as a metal fan but um this was just really different because uh i mean jade pretty much screamed through most of the satellite years i mean there, there was some singing here and there but that was it had always been that way with hopes fall you know so you it wasn't that big a deal, but uh, but with uh, with A types, I think they're trying to make a make a crack at kind of trying to go more mainstream. I think they were they were selling more records with Satellite Years, and they wanted to capitalize on that on that melodic sound, um, which they did. However, A types was kind of more of a uh, like they were just trying to go straight rock basically at, at that point. Yeah. Um, and you know, I remember reading an interview with, I think it was with Josh Brigham, the guitarist. And he just said that Jay just showed up at band practice one day and was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to sing on all these songs instead of scream. And the band was just like, uh, okay. You know, that, and that's how you know that buddy is not in your band, you know, that's right. <laughs> because he's going to, he's going to shove his bass down your throat and then you're only going to be able to scream. You know? <laughs> so get it out, get it out, get right. it out. I think the yeah. I think the thing that I hate about this record the most is not even that, like, I mean, okay, I, I don't like the singing, you know, I mean, because I don't like Jay's vocals, but the thing that gets me is the guitar tone, which it has this, like, it's like it was lifted from, you know, a clip and pieced in there, like it's too clean sounding, Sure. you know, like the distortion is just very, like, contained, the guitar feels very contained. It's and not. It's not a big sounding the record. record yeah. Um, which is kind of sad because, like, a lot of the ideas that are on it are actually pretty good. Um, like Icarus being a being a good one. Um, actually, I have. I actually do have a favorite song on this record because I don't. I don't hate A types because at this point I'm I'm still totally sold out on Hope's Fall and um, sometimes sometimes you know band justification like fan justification plays a huge role sometimes in how we digest records. You know, um, you know, if because I was already checked out at this point. <laughs> well, hopes fall, hopes fall for me. You know, is very similar to Zayo in the sense that, like, to me, they can't do a bad record. So, it, it's one of those one of those deals where A types is actually a pretty decent rock record. It's not great. Um, it's not going to change your life, but it is it is a decent rock record with a lot of good ideas on it that I feel like maybe just kind of got rushed out 
and and there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into it. Um, and I do actually have a favorite song on this record. It's called uh, Champion Beyond Blessings, uh, which actually probably sounds the most Hope's Folly on it, <laughs> on the record. It's also <laughs> one of the few songs that actually has screaming in it, um, although it's not the lead vocal. But, but the way it starts, I mean, it sounds almost like it could have been a B-side off of the Satellite Years. Um, just the, the way it starts off very melodic and, um, you know, it, it kind of builds up to like a to a pretty intense midsection where the band kind of goes a little crazier and starts sounding like the old hopes fall for about maybe 30 something seconds, uh, which is a huge rip off, you know, like <laughs> if you, uh, if you're a fan, it's like, Oh great. I got 30 seconds of the last record. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so I, hey, let's take my money. Yeah. Again. Right. One thing about hopes fall that stands out to me is especially on the early record, and even the EP, a little bit less on Satellite. It gets a little worse on A-Types, and then we haven't gotten to Magnetic North yet, but the the first and last record that they ever made have the most repetition, where the song really is just, let's loop this section five or six times. And they kind of get away from it on A-Types, but it's still there, and they kind of get away from it on... No wings to speak of. Satellite Years is kind of the most linear songs that they ever made. Yeah. So, did Hopes Fall secretly, over the course of their career, create a discography that is actually a giant planet? <laughs> Think about it. You have two hemispheres here. You have the albums at the end that have mainly singing. You have the album and the EP at the beginning that have mainly screaming and then you have this middle record where it's a big mix like an equator yeah maybe it's one giant planet it's a stretch but yeah it's brilliant <laughs> thing, I think you've stayed up too late it's a stretch <laughs> it is late your bedtime Joe <laughs> but uh no I get it though I mean I I, I think uh I think that Satellite Years is a great center point to the band um and it's weird how my opinions have changed because you know I used to be just very like all satellite years. It's it's, it's all I wanted. Um, oh, you know, A types. Yeah, you know, it was a record. It's a thing. It's a thing that exists. You know, it's um, it's worth talking about at least for that. But um, but Magnetic North came out in two thousand seven, and Dan is about to go full fanboy. <laughs> so <laughs> Magnetic North. Um, first of all, yeah, they get they get it off. They get everything off on the right foot with some. Uh, with some spacey uh, kind of like an atmospheric spacey intro which then kicks into um, Jay screaming starts the record off screaming so we're off to a good start um, screaming's not really okay sorry guys I'm sorry for any types here here you go yeah kind of um, he sings on this record but his singing is vastly improved over what it was on a types uh, which makes sense because a types was probably the first time he'd ever tried that Um and you know we we all, we all suck at at some point in our lives you know it hit something and um, his singing yeah. just wasn't it wasn't fantastic on a types it was passable you know um, it just seems like it's more emotional the lyrics have more meaning in uh, magnetic north and the music sounds it basically sounds like satellite years with more with more singing in it um, you know I would say that it's it's kind of a it's kind of like what they were trying to do on A-Types, but, like, is still the same band that put out the Satellite Years, you know? Yeah. Um, I actually listened to this one twice today. Yeah. Um, it It's definitely, you know, like, I couldn't even get through. Like, I've listened to A-Types before a long time ago, but I, I couldn't get through it this week. I just could not handle not. I needed something heavy. Right. Uh, Magnetic North at least was able to fill that, you know, to a degree. Uh, but, it, but I agree, like, the song structure and just the way that it, you know, all of it's conveyed. It feels like the vocals back up the emotion a lot. Right. Uh, that's conveyed in the song, and it 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 feels like a, a well thought out record. Yeah, I mean the vocals are the vocals are a lot bigger on this record. Um, they're they're more up front. I mean, they were up front on A types too, but they just didn't sound good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, with uh, with Magnetic North, um, he's kind of he's practiced a lot. He's you know sang in the shower in the car or whatever. You know. <laughs> <laughs> in between, in between recording those records, so uh, he's he's much more dynamic 
on like it's kind of one of those like okay i'm trying to learn how to sing so i've gotten to the point where i can sing now so it's not such a big deal that it has to just always be that um but it's smarter this time too because one of the one of the biggest uh one of the biggest criticisms for hardcore music and and metalcore music in general is that people say you know i i understand the screaming but I don't understand why it always has to be that, you know, wh- why it has to just go on and on and just be screaming the whole time. So I think it's one of those, like, I mean, obviously Jay can scream, you know, we all know that, uh, obviously he can sing, you know, um, and this was the first time where it was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to throw everything I can do out there, uh, for how, how well it works on the song. And it's not, it's not trying to prove a point in what it is, um, and I think that that's the biggest failure with A types was that it was like, oh look, we sing now, isn't that so cool? And like everybody thought it was cool, uh, like everybody in the band thought it was cool, but then like nobody that listened to the band thought it was cool, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, because it, it sticks out like a sore thumb from the entire collection of records. It's jolting um, for sure. It's it's completely stylistically different. I mean, it seems like you know we keep going back to A types, but. We're still upset about that record. Well, um, I, w- I was pretty <laughs> disappointed with it. Um, I, I, over the years, I grew to kind of like songs on it, but uh, for the most part, when I want to listen to when I want to listen to like the more rock version of Hope's Fall, it's always Magnetic North. You know, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, it does everything that A Types did better um, with not just sounding like that. But what I like yeah. about what I like about this record is just that it's they they kind of went back to the space theme. A lot more. It sounds like more of a continuation of Satellite Years, um, but just you know, but more in the rock direction. Which, if you listen to Satellite Years, you can tell they were going in that direction anyway. It was inevitable. Um, and he, you know, he sings a lot on Magnetic North, and people people bashed it for that. They, a lot of people called him another A types. And I remember, I remember being initially disappointed because of how melodic the record was and how not heavy it is. You know, because like. You know, for the most part, you know, we're all serious metal guys. You know, we like everything to be, you know. And Ever. It, yeah, yeah. And so it may, it may be closed-minded, but it's just how I feel. I can't help how I feel when I listen to something, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I was just caught on a bad week with this one, really. Yeah. Like, I just felt like listening to Nile all week. Right. And uh, I was listening to Hope's Fall instead, so. <laughs> I did I did bust out the Nile vinyl this week. Co- completely <laughs> different ends of the spectrum here. Yeah. But... But uh, with Hope's Fall, this was um, this was kind of a swan song too. I think, I think the writing was kind of on the wall that this was going to be their last record, and um, and so it's it yeah, sounds like that too. When this album came out, like it came out in May fifteenth, and you know it says here in September of two thousand seven they planned to change the name. Right. So they like wrote this, and then we're like, all right, this is the last thing we're doing, and right, you know, they plan on abandoning the entire ship. Right. It's a good good way to put it. Um yeah. because they uh they were very um very melodic on this record but also heavy. One thing I appreciate too is that you get lots of atmosphere, but on the same token of that, you have um a lot more build up. So like kind of what I was hinting at with when I was saying that like people want or people that don't listen to hardcore always wonder like why is it always heavy all the time? You know, um, but I think I think there's a lot more craftsmanship that goes into these songs because they do get heavy. Like like most of them, most of them they either they either start off heavy and kind of kind of move in a different direction, or um, you know, or or they build up. Like uh, the best way to put that is like the song "Bird Flu" um, starts off slow and then just kind of builds and builds and builds and builds. Until we're, you know, before you know it, we're screaming and it's it's heavy and it, you know, um, you've got you've kind of got that build up, kind of like kind of like what we were talking about with Adam Ship when we were talking about um, we were talking about Mothra and um, and yeah. aliens, you know, how those songs start. They start in a certain place and then they they end up somewhere completely different. Um, and that that's what I like about these songs is that they're they're crafted in such a way to kind of get you to get you involved and and uh, and kind of go on a journey uh, with the band through each song. And that's that's what the satellite or I'm sorry, that's what uh, that's what Magnetic North <laughs> sounds like to me is a journey. Um, and there's not a lot of records I could say about that say like that because. 
most records are just a collection of songs. You know, like that's what they are. Yeah. Like, we wrote these songs, you know, we wrote 20 songs. We picked the best 12 out of those 20, you know. Um, this sounds like a, uh, this sounds like a, a finished product from beginning to end. Um, you know, and, um, cause like in satellite years, you know, you're kind of, you're in space and it's, it's kind of fresh and it's exciting. And, um, you know, you get to, uh, you get to a types and you're like, wow, this space thing really isn't working out for me. I don't really, it's not what I yeah, expected. It pretty much sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not what I expected it to be. <laughs> uh, it's something totally different that I'm not used to. Um, so I'm going to take those experiences with me and then you get to, you get to magnetic North and it's like, okay, I'm returning to earth. I'm taking this huge journey from where I ended up back to where I began. Um, but I'm embittered by it. You know, like it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bitterness on this record and kind of just like a melancholy feel to it. And, um, it's very, it's very emotional. It's very melodic. It's very, um, intense at times. Um, and I, I think it, it's just kind of like a journey. Like I almost want to think of like, you know, they must've been teens when they did satellite years. And by the time you get to magnetic North, you have kind of a more, I hate using this term because it's overused in music, but it's kind of a more mature uh, oh, God, you said it. approach to uh hopes fall. Um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of a more pr- mature approach to the sound that they, that they kind of started with. And and in no way am I trying to say that hardcore is immature, or that metal's immature, just because it's heavy. I'm not. I'm not making. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not making that stand or anything. Uh, but it, <laughs> but the songwriting is more is more mature and more experienced because not very many bands with this many lineup changes are able to kind of be able to switch back and forth between their old and new sound like that. Uh, typically, it's it's an all or nothing. Yeah, and uh, so I, I enjoy, you know, I enjoyed that about uh, Magnetic North, and uh, it actually, within the past two years, it has actually replaced the Satellite Years as my favorite Hopes Fall album. Interesting. I never thought that was going to be different, dethroned. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just like it more. I know the songs better. Um, you know, that I, I could sing all of them. You know, kind of off the top of my head, and um. It's just, it's great. I mean, um, I like a lot of the different sound effects that are used in this. Um, there's just a lot of, a lot kind of, <laughs> it's funny because I, I was praising Satellite Years for not using like spacey noises and stuff on their record. Uh, but on this one, it, there actually are like spacey noises. Um, but it doesn't, it doesn't come off as cheesy. And it, um, it definitely, it definitely kind of feels like it was dedicated to the fans as far as, um, as far as being like, okay we did something that you guys didn't like and we're sorry. There are aspects of that that we do want to keep, but we also understand that you guys want to listen to space rock. So here it is. (laughs) (laughs) And it's worth repeating. No other band really sounds like hopes fall, but so many of them in the mid two thousands were ripping them off. Yeah. Many imitators, but nobody really sounded like them. Um, yeah, you know, I just uh, yeah, we're listening to uh, we're listening to the Devil's Concubine right now off of Magnetic North. This is another good example of a song that uh, really builds up because now now we're at kind of the more chaotic part of it. Yeah, you know. So it's also sad because this was you know like you said this was the uh, last album they made. Right. Uh, you know they didn't even make it uh, a year uh, into this record. Um, they went to January 08 and announced the breakup. Yep. Uh, you know, but if you like all of this, apparently I uh, just saw this on the Wikipedia page that they reformed in 2016 yep. and they are recording right now. They're for signed. A release in 2017. Yep. They signed uh, with a record label and they are, um, they are putting out a new record. And so I think it's going to be really interesting to hear what that sounds like. Um, you know, is it going to be Magnetic North 2? Is it going to be Satellite Years 2? It's not going to be the frailty of words. Um, yeah, I, I can almost guarantee that. I, I, don't <laughs> thi- I don't think it's going to be A-types uh, again. Um, 
I just I don't think they're capable of putting out something like that again. Well, um, they did a small reunion in 2011. Yes, with Doug. With Doug. Yeah. Where they played mainly the frailty of words, no wings to speak of, and I think one or two songs. A couple songs off Satellite, off Satellite Years and which, Doug sang which them. Which definitely gives you the impression that he wrote those. Right. And we were all yeah. happy with that, but then we were all still sad that Hope's Fall was gone. But right. I honestly had no idea, no indication, and I never believed that in 2017 we would have... A new Hope's Fall album 10 years after we got the last one. With... Yeah. With uh, with Jay Forrest, yeah, Jay Forrest yeah. is back. I mean, it's it's kind of like, um, you know, Hope Fall kind of has a Norma Jean um, kind of I thing about them in that like everybody really likes the first vocalist like a lot. He is he is you know he is the band to them. Um, Jay Forrest is Jay, more Hope's Fall than. But let's the face it, yeah, let's point. face it. Jay Forrest kind of is Hope's Fall. Um, you know, as as far as I'm concerned, he is and. I actually, even though, because it's it's one of those weird things where like if they if they said we're getting back together, we're going back to the frailty words and no wings to speak of sound, and we're gonna have we're gonna have Doug, you know, part of me would still be sad that like Jay wasn't on it, you know, like <laughs> it just because um, that's just where I'm at, and it, it's it's the same with Norma Jean too. Everybody calls uh, Corey the new guy, but he's not. <laughs> he's he's been in the band longer than Josh was. This is interesting for me if this is true. Adam Morgan is also back playing drums. Oh, really? If this is true, which there's no way for me to verify it, but that it, he is mentioned in the current lineup. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm happy. Yeah, that's listen, the uh, case. Morgan was the one on Satellite Years, right? Absolutely. Yeah, isn't it? I think the new lineup is basically the Satellite Years lineup, as far as I know. It's going to be a good year good. next year, guys, when yeah. this record comes out. Well, this year, man. Oh, it is coming out this year? 2017. That's what uh, year it is. Okay. <laughs> Let me put that on my calendar now. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm very disappointed at is whenever they did reunite, I was not aware of it. Um, honestly, I've been I've been back up on Facebook and stuff more uh, since we started doing the podcast than I was kind of before. And... Um, the sad thing about it is as soon as they reunited, they re-released, um, I think it was uh, Magnetic North, uh, A-types, A-types and, satellite. and Satellite Years on vinyl, which uh, I would have really loved to have. I mean, I could get them on eBay, but they're like hundreds of dollars, and I already have the CDs, so there's no, you know, <laughs> there's yeah, really no point. no point in doing that. Um <laughs> Maybe you'll find them in a record shop one day when you're perusing and find it for a dollar. Yeah, let's yeah. hope so, you know. Um so that means that means I want the rest of the re- that that means that I want the next record to suck so that everybody hates them and then I can pick their stuff up for cheap. <laughs> That'll work. I, I would say then that final thoughts on Hope's Fall is let's all listen to Space Rock. Right. Is this live what we're listening to right now, Joe? Nope. This is off the record. Can you play that part again? The part that's on right now. It is. Uh, it is my favorite moment on the record. Um, it's just, uh, just really nice. I, uh, uh, we lost Dan. Yeah, sorry. I'm just going into it. You know, Dan just pulled it. Do you like the uh, pseudo talking thing going on? I like the pseudo talking thing, but I like this part right here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I just like it's like a like a toy it's very telephone. Very Metroid. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just it's very nice. Did you just say Metroid? No. Oh. But uh must have been the uh, space rock talking to me. Yeah, I never made that connection, but uh Yeah, actually Metroid would probably be a really good game to play while listening to Hope's Fall. Because <laughs> you're you know, you're in space, <laughs> you're you're isolated. Yeah. <laughs> Works out really well. We're in space. In space, yeah. So uh yeah, Magnetic North, definitely my favorite record by Hope's Fall, and um I would not be disappointed at all if the next record was in that same vein. Go go to the store right now. Go on Amazon. Go on, you know, Google Play Music. Whatever, whatever you use to buy your music today, buy the Satellite Years, buy Magnetic North. Listen to them both, and then fill in the gaps. Yeah, you might want to. You might have to YouTube to get uh, <laughs> frailty words, but it is absolutely worth searching for if you can find it. Yeah, obviously, if you could find it on CD, that'd be great. But I, it'd probably be yeah. pretty difficult. Um, but uh, difficult. But YouTube, you know, YouTube is your friend. <laughs> you can also uh, you can also stream the Hope's Fall reunion with Doug. Uh, you can stream that on YouTube as well, I believe. Last time I checked, the whole concert was still up there. 
And on that note, April did indeed leave with silence. Yes, it did. Um, <laughs> next week, we have a special guest lined up, and uh, we are actually uh, going to be talking about the band Death. And uh, as, uh, as we usually say in our podcasts um, at some point, um, you can listen to our podcast on Google Play. You can listen to it on iTunes. I mean, you're listening to it now, so you probably already figured that out. But uh, you can find anything you ever want to know about us at www.discussmetal.com. And we just personally want to thank you for listening to our podcast. Uh, this, is the, this is why we do it. And uh, if you've been completely off board, off put by the last few episodes, I promise you we are going to get brutal. We are going to get heavy again uh, starting next week. Yay! There you go, buddy. <laughs> put that in your pipe and smoke it. This has been episode 11 of Discography Discussion. Thank you for listening. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at Discuss Metal. Subscribe to our podcast everywhere you listen to podcasts, including Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Visit DiscussMetal.com for all things discography discussion. And please send questions and comments to Dan and Joe Show at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for listening, and we will see you next week for episode 12, Death. <laughs>